My girl and me know that our love will last forever. My girl and me know that we do belong together. But sometimes it seems I shatter our dreams with some careless word or foolish lie. Me and my girl. Like this. Dad? Yes? Home is the hunter. Home is the hunter. Dad, are you all right? Who left this in the middle of the room? Sorry, it's Penny's lacrosse stick. Oh, hello, Penny. Hello, Mr. Harrop. So you play lacrosse, do you? No. But this is your stick? Yes. So you're thinking of taking it up? No. What's your... It's her mum's, really. Oh. She was captain of the lacrosse team and wants Penny to be the same. But I'm so rotten, and I never get a game. Yes, and she gets prickly heat when she runs about. Then I get patterns in front of my eyes, and they get bigger and bigger, and then everything goes black. Hmm? That means she's fainted. Huh? One week, I fainted six times. Well done, Penny. <laughs> do you want to see her do it? Huh? I can, if you like. No, 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 Penny, Penny, Penny. It's all right, Penny. No, I think the two of you just better get back to your homework, OK? Mm. My dad always helps me. Yes, but he's really brainy. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> well, no, it's just, it's a bit complicated. Mm. It's physics. Physics? <laughs> One of my best subjects at school. Really? Oh, yes, I was at wizard fizz. Now, <laughs> which bit don't you understand? Mm, Faraday's second law of electrolysis. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so that's what's giving you problems, is it, Sam? Do you understand it? Well, of course, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is some time since I've studied, um... Faraday's second law of electrolysis. Yes, thank you, Penny. Uh, <laughs> Faraday's second law of, uh... Electrolysis. Thank you, Penny. I know what we're talking about. <laughs> it's just that I'm most probably a bit more familiar with Faraday's first law. Oh, yes. The mass of any substance liberated during electrolysis is proportional to the quantity of electricity which passes through. Yes, yes, that's the one, yes. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Harrow. Hello, Maddie. Now then, has everybody had enough to eat? <laughs> Just a minute, Maddie, please, please. Oh, please may I have another slice of coffee walnut cake? That'll be your fourth slice. I thought you were on a diet. I am, but, but only at home. Excuse me, can we get back to electrolysis, please? Oh, eh, my cousin Betty had that done. Mm. <laughs> it's a method of removing unwanted facial hair. <laughs> no, Maddie. No, it is. She went to this clinic in Dumfries. No, I tried to help Sam. Oh, for goodness sake, she doesn't need it. Where, where are you two off to? Well, I don't want to hurt your feelings, Dad. But if you help me anymore, I'll never get finished. Mm. You won't forget my slice of cake, will you? I'll bring it up to you. And listen, you two, if there's anything you don't understand, you know what to do. Yes, Mr. Harrop. We'll telephone my father. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Penny. If you ask me, Mr. Harrop, Sam has far too much homework. Some nights she's up till nearly ten o'clock. Really? I wouldn't mind, but some of it's a complete waste of time. This electrolysis, for instance, it doesn't work. How do you mean? Well, three weeks after Betty had it done, her moustache grew in again. <laughs> Why, Liz? You're early. <laughs> yes, well, you know the saying, the early bird catches the first kick in the mouth. <laughs> do you do this every morning? Only when I can't get to dance classes. I've got to keep supple somehow, you know. I'm at a tricky age. Another month, I'll be 20. 20? You poor old crone. Hi, <laughs> Derek. What? What is this? 
<laughs> Are you sure you're a married man? Nearly finished. I'm sorry, Liz. This is an office, not a gymnasium. What if a client came in and saw that? Lucky client. <laughs> I think we give Liz far too much leeway. Most people have secretaries who work quietly and efficiently. They don't tap dance around the office, do impersonations of Louis Armstrong, or strip off first thing in the morning, exposing their limbs to all and sundry. <laughs> they don't know what they're missing, do they? <laughs> I wondered if someone could stop my seat from wobbling. I beg your pardon? <laughs> One leg shorter than the other. Ah. <laughs> well, that comes from all that exercise, Liz. Well, it's been getting worse all week. I mean, I get quite seasick when I'm typing a letter. I mean, look at the wobble when I rock backwards and forwards. You don't rock backwards and forwards, then you're a secretary, not a jockey in the Grand National. <laughs> ah, Nell, good morning. Not by a long chalk, it isn't. This wad of bills oozed through my letterbox this morning. All of these people worked on our last promotion and not one of them has been paid. I don't like people having to wait for their money. We don't like it either, Nell, but we can't pay anyone until the client pays us. And in the meantime, what am I to do with these? Tear them up? No, no, not at all. They'll come in very, very handy. There we are, Liz. Stick that under your wobbly leg. <laughs> I can see my journey here. It was a total waste of time. No, actually, I'm very pleased to see you for once, Nell. Listen. You'd say Sam was a fairly intelligent person, wouldn't you? I'd say she was amazingly bright, considering you're the father. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it she has stacks and stacks of extra homework every evening? Could you go down to the school and find out what's going on? Why the dickens don't you go? Well, you're sort of better at throwing your weight around than I am, and... Um... <laughs> anyway, schools make me a little nervous. Sounds like a phobia. Yes, it is. With some people, it's spiders. With me, it's schools. With Muriel, it's those tall, concrete lampposts. <laughs> they worry her silly. Why? She keeps imagining the bulbs are going to drop on her. <laughs> if you're so concerned about Sam, phone for an appointment with Miss Cranshaw, her form teacher. No, no, I don't feel that I'd be... Do as you're told. Yes, Miss, sorry. No. <laughs> Liz, can you get me some Crippins school, please? Crispins! <laughs> and don't look so miserable. Teachers are only human, you know. I know. The only, only teacher I liked was our art mistress, but she didn't last long. Too experimental. Oh, in what way? Well, the head walked in on one of her new painting classes and made her put her clothes back on again. Miss Cranshaw? Samantha's form teacher, yes. Oh, so it's not just policemen then? Sorry? <laughs> they get younger as you grow older. <laughs> I can't say I've noticed. No, well, you wouldn't, would you? I mean, what are you? You're about um, 20, 20. Uh, I don't think my age is important. 30. 28. Uh, 28. <laughs> <laughs> A form mistress already? Well, you must be absolutely marvellous at your subject. I, um, I bet it's art. Why do you say that? Well, uh, you remind me of a mistress I once had. Mr. Harris. No, sorry, art, 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 art mistress, art mistress. And she had blonde hair like yourself and was very well um, liked by her pupils. <laughs> I thought you wanted to talk about Samantha. Yes, yes, I do. I'm uh, actually, I'm a very concerned about the amount of homework she's getting. Well, so am I, Mr. Harris. Oh, good. Uh, Mr. Harris, may I be brutally frank? Oh yes, I think I'd like that. <laughs> In some cases, child psychiatry can be immensely beneficial. Oh, yes, it can, it can, it can, uh, provided you're a child. <laughs> <laughs> but that child...
child has to be emotionally disturbed, wouldn't you say? Oh, yes, I would, I would, I would. But, I mean, I fail to see what this has got to do with Sam. Well, Mr. Harrop, I give Samantha the extra homework to make up for the afternoon she goes to her psychiatrist. Her what? Her child psychiatrist. I don't send her to any child psychiatrist. Oh, but here's your letter authorising it. For the past four Wednesday afternoons, she's been attending Dr. Arnstein's group therapy sessions. But I didn't write this. Then who did? Well, Sam, obviously. I mean, I used to forge the odd sick note for school, but, I mean, this is the work of a genius. You mean it isn't true? Well, of course it isn't true. Then where does she go on Wednesday afternoons? Well, I don't know. Listen, leave this with me while I make a few inquiries. Of course. But good gently, Mr. Harrow. Samantha wouldn't do something like this lightly. For all we know, she may really be attending those therapy sessions. If Sam is going to say psychiatrist, she needs her head examined. <laughs> Mr. Harrop. Oh, hello, Maddie. Listen, I'm sorry I'm late. I had to go to the reference library. Sam in? She's in her room, mm. plowing through her homework. Oh, you got a book out, did you? Yeah, Dr. Spock's on truancy. I want to see what he says about it. Well, what does he say? Not a damn thing. Ticks, timidity, tiredness, toilet training. Is this for Sam's benefit? Yeah. It's a bit late in the day for toilet training. <laughs> no, Maddie. Sam's been skiving off school every Wednesday afternoon. Oh, my. Yeah, supposedly to see a child psychiatrist, but it's not true. I've checked it. Well, where does she go? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Penny, it's true. This is more than just a crush. This isn't somebody on the record or on the television. This is real flesh and blood. Just the sound of his voice. Don't you dare. I warn you, Penny, if you tell anyone, if anyone found out, I'd kill myself. I would. They'd stop me seeing him. And if it wasn't for Wednesday afternoons, I wouldn't want to live anyway. Well, I think you were very wise to sleep on it, Mr. Harrop. First love can be a devastating thing. I know, Maddie, but she's only 13 years of age. If this was Fiji, she could be a granny by now. <laughs> well, I've decided what I'm going to say to her. When she comes down for breakfast, I shall talk to her quietly and calmly. Oh, yes, that's the way to do it. I shall say to her, Sam, you know I love you. Oh, she does, Mr. Harrop. There's no doubt about it. And the love I have for you is the love of a father for his daughter. Here she comes now. Now that's the way to get through to her, calmly and quietly. Yeah. Morning, Samantha. Hello, Mary. Dad. Uh, now, Sam, could you sit down a moment, please? I'm sorry, Dad. I haven't got time. No, no, Sam. Oh, I've been tearing my room apart looking for this. Yes. Now, Sam. <laughs> that could be Penny. I'm just coming. I'm going early to finish my English project. Right. Now, uh, mm, Sam, can I grab this toast? Yes. Yeah. Sam, mm. you know I love you. Mm. Mm. I love you too, Dad. Mm -hmm. mm. Biscuits for bread. Yes, and the love I have for you... Mm. Is... Shut up, you loony! <laughs> ...is the love I have of a father for his daughter. Mm. Mm. Good day. Oh, it's Wednesday. I'll be back later as usual, Maddie. Yes, now, look, look, please. Sam, 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 Sam. Mm. Look, um, ab about Wednesday. I'm sorry, Dad. I've got to run before Penny breaks the door down. Sam! <gasps> I think I've got butter on your shirt. Mm. I'm coming! Yes, well, I think I handled that pretty well. <laughs> One quick look at this pie chart, and it's obvious that by sacking Liz and using temporary staff, we could make enormous savings. What do you think, Simon? Hmm? What do you think? About what? Haven't you heard a single word I've said? Uh, single words, yes. It's when you string them together, my attention wanders. <laughs> He's suggesting we get rid of Liz. 
Oh, come on, Derek, that's a bit cruel, isn't it? I mean, I know you're always complaining about the amount of noise Liz makes, but this morning you wouldn't even know she was here. That's because she isn't here. <laughs> Whenever she feels like it, she plays hooky. Okay. And then she waltzes in with some pathetic excuse. She's seen the dentist, the doctor. Charles Akar. Charles Aka <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we ought to find out for certain where she is before we come to any rash decision. We don't want to make a big mistake for the sake of the odd penny. Penny? Yes. Penny. Hundred to the pound, little round thing. <laughs> yeah, with glasses, yeah. What? Coffee, walnut, cake. Yes, they are round as well, but they're slightly bigger. <laughs> right, that's it. That's the answer. She'd know, wouldn't she? Now, you've got a sweet tooth. Where am I going to find the biggest, gooeyest coffee walnut cake in existence? It was a rather splendid delicatessen in Longacre. Right, thank you. What's, what's all that about? Well, if I didn't know better, I'd say he was pregnant. <laughs> Uh, hello, Penny. Hello, Mr. Harrop. Miss Cranshaw said I'd find you in here with your diet lunch, so I thought, uh, I thought I'd join you. <clears throat> now then, Penny, I don't suppose you know where Sam goes every Wednesday afternoon, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, I know. I heard her tell you all about it last night on the telephone. <laughs> That's very good. Is that the first time you've fainted today? It's very good. You know, it's jolly impressive. Now, I haven't got any smelling salts, but maybe if I wave this in front of your nose. <laughs> Come on, Penny. You'll help Sam by telling me where she goes. I'm not supposed to. Mm-hmm. And I'm not supposed to give you coffee walnut cake. You won't tell Sam. I promise. And if she asks how you found out? Don't worry. I'll tell her it was a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. You looking for something? No, my back's gone. I've been sitting in the doctor's all morning. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Last night I turned over in bed and I heard that. Huh? Yeah, just like that. Your boyfriend been playing with his castanets again, has he? <laughs> no, it was my back. And then this morning I could hardly get out of bed, but I thought I'd better come in and say what happened. Well, I do appreciate it, Liz. And the chair's gone and all. Huh? God, Liz. You weren't just sitting on it when it happened, were you? No, I just leant on the back of it and the leg went. Like that? <laughs> yeah, just like that. Oh, Liz, you've deigned to come in at last. And I'm afraid we've got some rather bad news uh, for you. Just a minute, Derek. Please. I'm sorry, Simon, but we've taken a vote uh, please, in your absence. Please, now. Now, just two questions I want you to answer, right? The chair that you complained about yesterday, it's finally gone. Yeah. And you've hurt your back. Just a bit, but That's I'll... Excuse us, please, please, please. Now, because Liz has hurt her back, she could sue us for everything we've got. Now, of course, if the two of you want to still give Liz the push... As a matter of fact, I was just thinking we should give her the rest of the day off. And Liz, of course, Derek still wants to give her the push. Push me? No, 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 no. I was thinking more of a raise, cash for the doctor's bill, and I'm going to give her a piggyback down to a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> what a very good idea, Derek. You're looking suspiciously pleased with yourself. Mm. Yes, well, I suppose you'll have to know about it sooner or later. Nell, your granddaughter skies off school to see a chap play Hamlet at the Royal Court. What? Yes. Every Wednesday afternoon, she sits up in the gods, worshipping her hero from afar and weeping buckets when he snuffs it. I don't believe it. No, Nell, don't get your nether garments in a twist. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last Wednesday she goes, because when I get home tonight, I'm going to tell her how ridiculous she's being. Yeah? Hi. Hi. How was it? 
How is what? Looks as if you didn't enjoy it too much this week. Well, well that's just an old school program from a school trip. Listen, Sam, I know all about it. And tomorrow, we're going to see Miss Cranshaw, and we're going to tell her, despite evidence to the contrary, that you are not a loony. Oh, I don't care. I don't care about anything anymore. Not even about the chap who plays Hamlet? Especially not him. They announced it at the end of the matinee. Listen, Sam, it won't work, you know. I mean, she goes mad and he snuffs it. <laughs> but I wrote him tons of letters. He never answered one. Well, I know. Well, he's a, he's a very busy chap, you know. I mean, all those relatives to stab every night. <laughs> oh. Sam, come on. Give yourself time. The real prince is waiting for you. But you don't understand how it feels. <sighs> Listen, it happens to us all, even your grand. Even you? Well, with me, it, it happened much earlier. Now, you promise you're not going to laugh? Promise. Well, when I was six years of age, I fell in love with Tarzan. <laughs> Tarzan? Mm -hmm. You promise not to laugh? You're making it up. No, 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 I swear it. I went to see Tarzan and the Leopard Man three times. I came back, put my pyjamas in a paper bag and set off for Africa. <laughs> I was gone for three hours. Well, how far did you get? Well, not far. I sort of just walked round and round the block. Why? Well, I wasn't allowed to cross the street by myself. <laughs> Girl, I 